Hello everyone. Welcome to this presentation on Voice over Internet Protocol, commonly known as VoIP. In this session, we will explore the fundamental concepts of VoIP, the essential protocols that make it work, and how it is implemented in real-world scenarios. By the end of this presentation, you will have a solid understanding of how voice communication is transformed and transmitted over the internet using protocols like Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, and Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, within the Voice over IP framework. So, what exactly is Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP? Simply put, it is a technology that allows you to make voice calls using an internet connection instead of a traditional phone line. It works by converting analog voice signals like when you speak into a phone into digital packets. These digital packets of voice data are then transmitted over the internet, similar to how emails or web pages are sent. This technology enables seamless integration with various other digital services and applications, making communication more versatile and efficient. Voice over IP offers several key advantages over traditional phone systems. First and foremost is cost efficiency. Voice over IP significantly reduces call costs, especially for long distance and international calls, as it leverages the internet rather than traditional phone networks. Voice over IP also provides flexibility. You can make calls from any internet connected device, whether it's a computer, smartphone, or specialized voice over IP phone, regardless of your location. It integrates seamlessly with other business applications and services, such as customer relationship management, or CRM, systems, enhancing productivity. Voice over IP offers scalability, allowing you to easily add new lines and extensions as your business grows, often without needing additional hardware. There are a lot of advanced features such as call forwarding, voicemail to email, auto attendant, and much more. Voice over IP also provides powerful analytics. You can gain insights from detailed call metrics and reporting, helping you understand and improve your communication strategies. Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, operates on a layered protocol stack, similar to other internet technologies. At the very top, we have the application layer where protocols like Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP H.323, and Media Gateway Control Protocol, or MGCP, manage the signaling and control of voice calls. Next is the transport layer, which uses Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, and Real-Time Transport Control Protocol, or RTCP, along with User Datagram Protocol, or UDP, and Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP, to transmit voice data. The network layer uses Internet Protocol, or IP, with versions 4 and 6 to route data packets across the Internet. Below that, the data link layer includes technologies like Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and point-to-point -point protocol, or PPP, for local network communication. Finally, the physical layer consists of the physical cables and wireless signals like fiber, copper, and wireless that carry the data. Now let's focus on some key protocols. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is used for setting up, modifying, and ending calls between different endpoints. Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, is responsible for carrying the actual voice data between these endpoints. Real-Time Transport Control Protocol, or RTCP, provides quality statistics and control information for the Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, data streams, helping to ensure call quality. Now let's explore the Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, in more detail. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is a text-based signaling protocol used for setting up, changing, and ending voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, sessions. It uses a client-server model, where user agents, or UA, act as clients and servers to manage calls. Structurally and functionally, Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, is similar to Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP, the protocol used for web browsing, making it easier to understand and implement. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, uses a uniform resource identifier, or URI format, similar to email addresses, such as SIP, username at domain.com, to identify users and devices. It operates independently of the transport layer, 
allowing it to run over protocols like User Datagram Protocol, or UDP, or Transmission Control Protocol, or TCP. User Agent 1 and User Agent 2 communicate through a Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, server to establish, maintain, and terminate calls. Invite messages initiate calls, 200 OK messages confirm connections, and acknowledgement, or ACK, messages finalize the setup. Session Initiation Protocol, or SIP, uses various message types to manage voice over internet protocol, or VoIP sessions. These messages can be broadly categorized into request methods and response codes. Request methods are commands sent from a client to a server to perform specific actions. Common request methods include invite, which initiates a call, ACK, which acknowledges a final response, buy, which terminates a call, cancel, which cancels a pending request, register, which registers a user's location, and options, which queries the capabilities of a server. Response codes are sent from a server to a client to indicate the outcome of a request. These are similar to Hypertext Transfer Protocol, or HTTP response codes. Codes in the 100 series are informational, such as 180 ringing, indicating that the destination is being alerted. Codes in the 200 series indicate success, such as 200 OK, confirming that a request was successful. Codes in the 300 series indicate redirection, such as 300 zero multiple choices, indicating several options for the client to choose from. Codes in the 400 series indicate client errors, such as 403 forbidden, meaning the server understood the request but is refusing to fulfill it. Codes in the 500 series indicate server errors, such as 500 internal server error, meaning the server encountered an unexpected condition. Finally, codes in the 600 series indicate global failures, such as 603 decline, meaning the destination is unwilling to accept the call. Here is an example of a session initiation protocol, or SIP invite message. It includes details like the destination address, via headers for routing max forwards to prevent loops, to and from addresses, a call ID for unique identification, a CSeq for sequencing, contact information, content type, and content length. The Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, plays a crucial role in voice over internet protocol, or VoIP communications. It carries the actual media, whether it's voice or video, ensuring that you can hear and see the other person during a call. It provides timing information, making sure that the audio and video are synchronized properly. It also uses sequence numbering, allowing the receiving end to reassemble packets in the correct order, even if they arrive out of sequence. Real-time transport protocol, or RTP, typically runs over user datagram protocol, or UDP, to minimize latency, which is essential for real-time communications. It works in conjunction with Real-Time Transport Control Protocol, or RTCP, which is used for quality monitoring and statistics, helping to maintain a high-quality call experience. Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, supports multiple codecs, such as G.711, G.729, and Opus, which compress and decompress the audio and video data. The Real-Time Transport Protocol, or RTP, Packet header includes key fields like the version, padding, extension, contributing source identifiers count, marker, payload type, sequence number, timestamp, and synchronization source. These fields are essential for managing the real-time transmission of voice and video data. Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP codecs, short for coder decoders, are essential for converting analog voice signals into a digital format suitable for transmission over Internet Protocol, or IP, networks. The choice of codec has a significant impact on voice quality, bandwidth usage, central processing unit, or CPU usage and latency. Different codecs offer various trade-offs between these factors, so selecting the right one is crucial for optimizing voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, performance. Common Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, codecs include G.711, which offers high-quality audio at a bit rate of 64 kilobits per second and a sample rate of 8 kHz. 
G.729, which provides medium quality audio at a lower bit rate of 8 kilobits per second, also with an 8 kHz sample rate. G.722, which delivers high quality audio at 48 to 64 kilobits per second, with a 16 kHz sample rate. Opus, which is highly versatile and can provide very high quality audio at bit rates ranging from 6 to 510 kilobits per second and sample rates from 8 to 48 kilohertz. And ILBC, which offers medium quality audio at 13.33 to 15.2 kilobits per second with an 8 kilohertz sample rate. Implementing voice over internet protocol or VoIP involves several key steps to ensure a successful deployment. The first step is network assessment, where you evaluate your network's bandwidth, latency, and jitter to ensure it can handle voice traffic effectively. Next is hardware selection, which involves choosing the right devices such as internet protocol or IP phones, soft phones, or analog telephone adapters. Then there is setting up a voice over internet protocol or VoIP server. This involves installing and configuring a private branch exchange or PBX, software like Asterisk or FreePBX. After that, you will need to configure a session initiation protocol or SIP trunk to connect to the public switch telephone network or PSTN via a session initiation protocol or SIP trunking provider. Quality of service or QoS implementation is crucial. It involves configuring traffic prioritization to ensure voice packets are given preference over other types of data. You will also need to implement security measures, such as encryption, firewalls, and virtual local area networks, or VLANs, to protect your voice over internet protocol or VoIP system from threats. This diagram illustrates a typical voice over internet protocol or VoIP network architecture, showing the internet protocol or IP private branch exchange or PBX server internet protocol or IP phones, soft phones, and analog telephone adapters connected through an internet protocol or IP network, and the session initiation protocol or SIP, trunk connecting to the public switch telephone network or PSTN. Voice over internet protocol or VoIP offers numerous advantages. It also faces several challenges. Quality of service issues such as packet loss, jitter and latency can significantly impact call quality. Security concerns, including vulnerabilities to eavesdropping, denial of service attacks and fraud, require robust security measures. Emergency services present challenges with accurately tracking the location of callers for emergency calls. Power dependency is another issue, as voice over internet protocol, or VoIP, relies on electricity, unlike traditional phone lines. Interoperability problems can arise due to compatibility issues between different voice over internet protocol, or VoIP systems. Looking ahead, Voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, is poised for significant advancements. 5G integration will enhance mobile voice over Internet Protocol, or VoIP, with higher quality and lower latency. Artificial intelligence or AI-powered features, such as voice assistance, real-time translation, and sentiment analysis, will enrich user experiences. Web Real-Time Communication, or WebRTC, Expansion will enable browser-based communication without the need for plugins or downloads. Unified communications will integrate voice, video, messaging, and collaboration tools into seamless platforms. Enhanced security measures, including advanced encryption and blockchain-based authentication, will address security concerns. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.